Good morning and welcome back to Kirkstone. You may see in front of you two things of notable value. First of all there is an assemblage of plants from unboxings 1 and 2 of the Mega Hall from Knobs and Blobs 2 on eBay UK. You will also see a diminishing pile of boxes. So last week we got rid of box number 2 this being box number two, which is now sufficiently empty for me to discard. Leaving us with uh, mathematical certainty, box number three. So let's dive straight on in and uh, remind ourselves of what's been happening. Shall I just uh, display it with the knobs and blobs sticker on, dis on, on show? Here we are. Knobs and blobs to London, UK. Which is only slightly ironic because Knobs and Blobs aren't based in London. Because Benjamin has moved to the very wilds of the countryside. To the Fenlands. Isn't that poetic? The Fenlands of Norfolk. So there's another irony. He's growing the, 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 the driest of arid plants in the wettest part of the United Kingdom. The fens, the watery byways and canals of old England is, is his current stomping ground. Right, let's have a look. Let's dive straight in and see what we have in the third unbelievably trepidatious instalment of the Knobs and Blobs Mega Hall. See, and I've managed to resist all this time returning to my, to my attempts at theatre and saying Mega Hall. And I haven't done that even once. Because quite frankly, the last time I said Mega Hall was acutely embarrassing. So I've resisted the temptation. What have we got? What have we got? We have got a very round and minutely spiny and gymno Coliseum, which I cannot immediately identify as there are about 50 very very similar but it looks very much like um, that clade attached or related to Uruguayense so again it, as usual with the, the quality plants that come from Benjamin from Knobs and Blobs too you're talking about a plant which is about the size of a of the Big Apple. Yeah. Not the Big Apple in New York, but a actual apple which is big, of a large size. A large size fruit called an apple. There we are. Lovely dark green colour. Gymno Coliseum. What could it be? Berktii it looks a little bit like. Uruguayensis. I don't know. I know it's a gymno, but I don't know which gymno. Let's see if this one I can identify a bit more positively. And this is... Oh, that's nice. That looks like Maculata. Who can tell? But it's definitely one of the Disticus uh, Gasterias. But of particular note with this lovely tall plant is the yellow markings because it is a variegated form so all of these leaves to a certain extent there and there and in here are sporting and look at that one there have you see that one if i can focus right in on that one and do another flying special effect if you see that small head in the middle there it's very, very, very uh, clearly marked. Now what might happen if that is a very, very regularly variegated offset, we might actually remove that offset from the parent plant so that we have a single plant which is more variegated than the sporadic variation which is evidenced on the mother plant. Now, that does happen sometimes. Well, I did see a nice uh, um, clip on YouTube if I knew where it was, I'd tell you, but I've forgotten. But there's a Hawarthia, I believe it's Hawarthia limifolia, where all of the leaves are variegated in that typical um, 
a Waltheia limifolia fashion where half the leaf is yellow and half the leaf is green but the offset was entirely yellow and that plant was removed and potted up as a as a separate yellow plant so you had that yellow Hawaltia limifolia with the white banding across the leaves absolutely stunning plant so we have to watch how this offset develops because if it is uh, very variegated it may be removed from its mother slightly earlier than I would normally do in fact I don't normally remove offsets as a, as a, as a habit I normally leave them exactly where they are uh, and grow clumps. I like to see plants in clumps. I kind of imagine that they're, they're happier when they're all together. It's a childish notion, but it entertains me in, my, in the long, lonely hours around uh, working in the greenhouse. Is there anything else in this large box? Or can we call today's proceedings over? Well, there is something else in this box. And what we also have in this box is, is, Hawarthia, it looks like Symbiformis, and it looks like Symbiformis truncata. But whatever it is, it's definitely of that, uh, that broadish group, Cooperi, Symbiformis, and others of that ilk. So we have a, a tightly clustering former with these very, very thick, succulent, windowed leaves, windowed at the end. And you can see again we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten offsets, which will make a lovely uh, irregular clump around that clearly defined central plant. So uh, as I as I have to with these deliveries, I'll uh, I'll check exactly which particular taxon this is, and then I'll put the the name on at the end in the um, in the title or the video description. So we we actually know with 100% certainty what we're talking about, as opposed to the more or less 90% certainty that I'm operating under right now. Okay. So, is there anything else in this box? Well, the short answer, my green fingered friends, is there is. And I know what this is. <laughs> I, I wouldn't challenge you to guess what this is because that would be grossly unfair. I think I th I'm, I'm, I'm almost tempted to say I would give somebody a thousand pounds if they could identify what this is from this stage. Because you wouldn't be able to. But it's not a cactus and it's not even a succulent. But it is a plant which I have searched for for many years and was very surprised to see it as one of Benjamin's offerings. Now I know from the shape of the leaf and I remember ordering this. I don't always remember ordering plants, but I do remember ordering this one. This is a South American succulent bulb, an amaryllid, and I'm sure everybody knows by now how partial I am to amaryllids, called Rauhia. And this is a Rauhia peruviana. Very, very rare and uncommon plant which I'm handling with incredible care because I really don't know how well this is all constituted but it seems to be pretty pretty strong so we actually have a clump of four bulbs of this rare South American amaryllid and the leaves are very thick and very leathery and uh, much thicker than an amaryllis or a, <coughs> a gladiolus or any, um, any bulbous plant with which you might be very familiar. They're more like um, Sansevieria thickness really. Anyway, that is the plant. It's a large specimen plant of a very unusual South American amaryllid bulb called Rauhia. And clearly from the name Peruviana, it has its general... Uh, 
place of origin and area of distribution in Peru. Right, so I'll just try and make space as we conclude, no, as we move towards the conclusion of this astonishing mega haul from uh, my friend Benjamin Bannister, trading as Knobs and Blobs 2 on eBay UK. And just check one final time that I haven't made a complete Charlie of myself and managed to miss a plant. I haven't. So that box is also now devoid of any plant life. And it is time for the honorary flyover. Where shall I start? Well, I think I'll start off by showing the, the entire collection in its immensity. Okay, so that's more or less what's going down. That's what's going down on the street today, my man. That is indeed what's on display in the hood. So we have that wonderful broad-leaved uh, maculate gasteria, which I believe to be platyphylla. It's about uh, four and a half, five inches across the whole plant. And the leaves are incredibly wide. It's difficult to describe just how wide these leaves are. They are enormously wide. Okay, so we have that is the first of the Gasteria. Should I try and remain in theme? Okay, and we have another Gasteria here. This is a very large six inch wide clump of that glorious dark skinned uh, Gasteria, which I believe to be Nigrescens, which has about 25 to 30 individual heads on it. Then we have another lovely, lovely clump. We have this small, what, four and a half inches across a clump of Gasteria bicolor Lilliputana. That really is a, really is a lovely, lo lovely little plant. Actually, I can't wait, literally can't wait to put that in a pot and uh, see it amongst um, some grit, a nice clean substrate and give the thing some water. At this time of year I tend to water these plants, these uh, uh, Gasteria and Haworthia about once a month. So the same kind of watering cycle as the um, Boophanes and Brunswickias and those other South African bulbs. And we had another clump here. This is that hybrid between Truncata and Morganii. Yeah? And a bit more... Uh, well, actually, no, I would say there's a bit more Truncata than Morganii. But this one's actually pretty much a halfway house between the two. And again, uh, an immensity of individual heads on here. I won't, uh, I won't attempt to enumerate them uh, accurately, but I'd say there's certainly about 20 individual heads. If I was so minded to split them up, but as you know, that is not my habit. Then we have uh, another Gasteria over here. This is the variegated Maculata. And earlier on, I did draw special attention to that central offset, which appears to be more variegated than the parent plant. But we'll, uh, we'll monitor progress on that one. We won't, we won't make any uh, hasty or rash decisions. But if it does prove to be more variegated than the mother plant, then it'll be getting whipped off and potted up separately. Then we had another uh, Haworthia from the Cooperi Symbiformis group. So a soft-leaved, very, very succulent, very soft and squishy leaves. And again, multiple heads coming out from that from that central point. And there's the, the central point in all its glory. And then we had a very, very, very uh, unusual Haworthia. This very large, double-headed Haworthia planifolia. Which doesn't look anything like a Haworthia in any way whatsoever. Until it flowers. There we are. So I, again, I can't wait to get that cleaned up and um, potted to see what that looks like because it's so unusual. Then there were a couple of agaves. There was the uh, beautiful. I really love this plant. It, you know, I often say a plant's in my top fifteen or my top twenty. Agave Victoria Regina is in my top ten. There, I've said it. I've said it, and I won't take it back. It's one of my top ten plants, and I and I love it to bits. I don't want to oversell it because someone else will get in touch and say, Can you get me one? Can you get me one of those? I can't live without it. I really can't. Yeah? So I'm not getting any more. I've got somebody one and I'm happy that I have, but I'm not getting any more. 
Then we had another small agave, Isthmensis. This is the Japanese clone, Isthmensis ohiraijin, which is a variegated plant with those bluey grey leaves and that central white collection of median stripes. And then we had some cacti. We had that very large and spiny Echinocactus platyacanthus. Here we are. Big and bluey purpley and very very spiky. Then we had another cactus which was this dark skinned Gymnoclisium baldianum which I likened in its size to an apple. It is uh, amazingly apple sized. Uh, I've rarely seen a cactus as apple sized as this one. If there was a competition for disguises amongst the Gymnocolisium fraternity and this guy went dressed as an apple, he would surely win. Look at that. Absolutely love the genus Gymnocolisium. And uh, where are we? What have we missed? We've got another Gymnocolisium as yet unidentified, which might be Quailianum actually. I'm just I'm thinking on. It might be Quailianum, which does have a look of uh, Uruguayensis about it. Okay, a large growing Gymno. There we are. And then finally, the jewel in the crown, the jewel in Peru's crown. This is incredibly rare, incredibly unusual, and in this case, four headed Rau here. Rauhia Peruviana with his bird's nest. I love to see a well-rooted plant coming through because you know it'll establish itself quite quickly. And we're in its growing season so it should be able to send down some small fibrous roots pretty soon and uh, start soaking up water. And we have that uh, one lateral bulb from the main one there, one smaller lateral bulb on the top and another lateral bulb underneath. And then we have the main bulb, there we are, and those long, lush, soft, succulent leaves, which are about what? Ooh, seven inches long? Rauhia Peruviana. So that concludes what has been the, the largest haul to date. And uh, I'm trying to train myself really not to keep going on about knobs and blobs too. There are other suppliers out there who sell very, very, very good products. All I will say is that I've now done something like 9, 10 unboxings from Knobs and Blobs 2 from Benjamin Bannister. And there must be a reason for that. Because these are extremely high quality plants. I mean, just look at that. Look at the size of that clump. Look at the size of that clump. Look at the size of this Hawarthia. Look at the size of this Hawarthia clump. Look at the size and quality of this variegated Gasteria. And all of these plants are, are selling for, you know, round about five or six pounds in English money, seven or eight dollars in American money. And they're extremely good value, extremely healthy plants. And I look to each delivery from Benjamin with even more excitement than the last. But I am uh, I'm guilty, I believe, of becoming both loquacious and overly wordy right now. And I'm loath to be accused of such things. So I'll just do a, a final flyover of these various plants without description. If I was clever, I could add some music to this. But I'm, I'm not at that stage yet on the, on the video production technique line. So for now I'll linger lovingly on that uh, extremely rare Rauhia, Rauhia Peruviana and it's a goodbye from me. Many 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 thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoy watching these uh, these short videos as much as I enjoy making them. And looking at these fabulous plants from all around the world, I really hope you get as much pleasure from, uh, from gardening and even from the, the little bits of theoretical botany I drop in every so often, as I do. And I hope you, uh, you continue to uh, prosper in your gardening life, to look after your plants, to love them. They're not objects, you know, they are living things. And uh, I sometimes think we, we, we tend to forget that. 
as we chop bits off them and uh, stick bits into them and move them from one pot to another pot without asking them. They are living things, they are all part of God's universe and uh, I've generally found over the years that if you treat them with respect then they'll be good for you. They'll grow well, they'll flower and they'll survive the inclement uh, <laughs> British winter in particular. So uh, love them as they love you and uh, be good to each other and you'll have a great time with this fabulous, fabulous uh, gardening hobby. It's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from this latest delivery from Benjamin Bannister from Knobs and Blobs 2. It's goodbye from the Kirkstone Garden and uh, I'll see you all very soon. Bye bye.